Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm doing some French country thrift flips. If you like DIY and thrift flips, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Our first project today is this little jewellery box that I thrifted for a few dollars. I thought it had a lovely shape, but it was quite plain. So my first step is to remove the little handles. I'm going to keep the little knobs, but unfortunately the other attachments, one of them was broken, so we're not going to be using that today. So I'm going to unscrew those, and then I'm going to take some 220 grit sandpaper and give this a light scuff sand. This jewelry box has quite a shiny, smooth finish, so doing the scuff sand is really going to help my chalk paint stick. I don't think that it's so shiny that this isn't going to solve my problem. I'm sure that it's going to be fine. If I was worried, I could always use Dixie Belle Slick Stick or a spray sealer, but the scuff sand will be enough for today's project. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to take out a little hook that was on the back of this jewelry box or to take the lid that flips up from the top either because the little screws were not being very easy to work with and I was worried that I would burn them. After cleaning the jewelry box, I'm going to give it three coats of Dixie Belle's buttercream. This is quite a dark color and I want to have a very consistent coverage here. So I am going to take the time to do that extra third coat. I'm using a small brush here to make sure that I don't get too much paint. When you're working on little projects like this, you definitely want to have a smaller brush and you also want to make sure that you're not using as much paint on your brush either. Otherwise you may end up with drips. I'm not going to paint around the entire drawer because these are a tight fit and I don't want to risk the drawers not going back inside. So I'm going to work my way around the jewellery box until I have full coverage. Remember, you can find a full product list in the description below and all these products on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Once my paint is dry, I'm going to be using the new Rural Scenes stamp from IOD. I love this design. It is perfect if you like twirl and you can create all these beautiful little scenes. And I'm going to select this larger scene first and I'm going to use just a bit of plastic backing to help me with my stamping today. And I'm using black IOD ink. I'm just going to ink up my stamp, being careful not to overload it. And then I'm I'm going to make sure that I've got the outside around it clean and then I'm going to get ready to stamp. I want to put it in the center up the top so I'm going to very carefully position it where I want it to go hovering until I'm happy with the position and then I'll carefully press down. Once you've got it down you want to make sure you have one hand on your stamp at all times while the other hand moves and applies pressure. When you're ready, you wanna lift your stamp straight up so that you don't accidentally shift it. And then I need to work out what else I want to add. I love the little sheep design there. So I'm just sort of hovering the stamp set over the top of my design. And then I'm going to get that sweet little sheep, ink that up, and I'm going to position that in the bottom right-hand corner. I want to extend the scene out to the sides a little bit. So I'm gonna very carefully position that and then press down. Next, I'm going to repeat the same process. I wanna add a little duck up the top to create some movement up the top. So I'm going to ink that up and very carefully press my stamp down. Now I'm going to add some stamps to the left-hand side. There's a really sweet little grouping of sheep that I want to use. So I've added that to a thin mound. I'm inking it up and then I'm just going to hover it above where I want it to go. And I decided that I'm actually going to remove the ink from a couple of the sheep as I just felt like it was a little bit too crowded. One of them would be hanging off. So I'm gonna just start with the two little sheep in the center and then I'm going to very carefully press down. Now 
Now I'm going to ink up just the smaller little sheep so that I can position it a little bit differently over on the right hand side. So I'm going to have a sheep standing and one laying down and then I'm pressing down. So this is what I love with these stamps is that you can really make it into a unique design. Now I'm going to grab one of the masks for my stamps. Now each pack comes with these and they are laid out in the same way that your stamps are so that you can find them a bit easier. Now I'm ready to ink up the little trees on my thin mount that I have there and I'm going to just make sure that I clean up any excess ink and I'm going to very carefully position it and making sure that I'm not overlapping the little sheep. I'm pressing down and then very carefully I'm going to pull it away. I did notice that because of the way the mask is that some of the tree was missing so I did go in and just very carefully press over the top of it just to get a, a little bit more of the tree filled in there. Always make sure that you clean off your masks and put them straight back so that you don't lose them. This pack in particular has a lot of small parts so you just want to make sure that you're really making that conscious effort to put them away. You can see that I've added the masks to the sheep on the left and now I want to add some ground. So I've added some to a thin mount. I'm inking it up and I'm going to position it over the top of the sheep but the mask will protect my image so it will look like uh, the sheep are standing on it and in front of it and again I'm going to add my mask over on the right hand side and I'm going to do a very similar look here just adding that ground in so that it doesn't look like my little sheep are sort of hovering in the air and here I actually do this twice I add a little hill here and then I go back in and layer some more ground over the top. Now I'm going to add some trees. So I've added my little mask back to the standing sheep. I'm inking up the trees and then I'm going to very carefully press them down. The masks can be a little bit slippery. So just go really slow when you're doing this so that you don't accidentally shift your stamp. Now I want to add some elements to the front of the jewelry box. So I'm going to just grab that stamp again and sort of hover it in front of it. And I've decided on this sweet little house with trees seen, I've got that on a thin mount. I'm going to ink it up and I'm going to press it down on the right hand side of the drawer. This drawer has a slight curved edge and my stamp overlaps a little bit. So I'm going to very carefully press underneath the thin mount and press that against the drawer just to make a bit better contact. I've got the drawers arranged how they will sit in the jewelry box. I've positioned that little duck up in the top left hand corner and now I'm going to add this sweet little scene. It's a couple of kids playing with some dogs. I think that that is super sweet. I'm going to put that in the bottom left hand corner and then I need to come back in and put the mask on those because again I don't want it to look like they're sort of hovering in the air so I'm going to grab a little hill design and repeat the same process like we did up the top with the sheep layering that ground so that it looks like they're on the hill and it's not cutting through the design. I'm then going to add a little bush to the right hand side. There's so many trees in this stamp. You have so much to choose from. So it just depends what look you're going for. Here you can see I've put it back together and I'm positioning where I want my little ducks to go. I want them to sort of draw the eye upwards into the center. So I'm going to ink up the first one and apply that and very carefully press down. Always remember that you don't have to press super hard on these. If you do that, you'll find that your image is a bit blurred. Here I was going to apply it with the thin mount, but I was worried that I wouldn't be able to position it correctly because of the top. I probably could have opened it as well, but I like to see how things are going to look with it all together. So the drawers in, the top down. So I just felt like this worked a little bit better. Now I'm going to add a scene to the right hand side. I've got the sweet little sheep that we used earlier. I'm going to apply those in the center and then I'm also going to come in and add a little tree on the right hand side. And just like before, I'm also going to be adding a little hill underneath them, but obviously I need to have my little masks there to protect it. 
I love that these come with a mask. It's just such a thoughtful thing that the IOD sisters do to make sure that you can really create a custom composition. Now moving on to the left hand side, I've got a sweet little couple here with their dog. I'm stamping that and then adding the mask and I'm just adding that ground again like before. You can see I'm really repeating quite a few steps here, but I hope it's giving you some ideas on how you can lay these out. I'm going to add a tree down as well. I didn't have to do a mask here because I'm going to have the tree on the hill. Once my ink is dry, I'm going to lightly distress the edges of the little jewelry box just to give it that vintage feel. If you are not a fan of the distressed look, this is just a step that you can leave out. Once I've removed all the sanding dust, I'm going to very carefully seal the jewelry box with Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax in clear, and I am buffing that wax with a microfiber cloth. I have had some people ask me why am I using that instead of a paper towel. I really like these because they have less lint, so I'm less likely to get pet hair, which I have a lot of around, or bits of lint. Finally, I'm going to add those little knobs back on. And here's our finished jewellery box. I love how this turned out. I am a big fan of Twelle and these Rural Scenes stamps were so fun to play with. You can create your own custom design. Let me know what do you think of this in the comments. Our next project is this little candle holder pillar. This is going to be a pretty easy one. I've cleaned this already and now I'm going to come in with two coats of Dixie Belle's Buttercream Chalk Mineral Paint. I did have to use a smaller brush again to make sure that I could get into all of the details on this one. There was a lot of texture on this one too and I love the texture. I just wasn't that crazy about the color. I think they were trying to mimic stone but it just was not not my my thing i just didn't like it so this paint is going to give it a much needed refresh once my paint was dry i came in with dixie bell's best dang waxing clear and i'm sealing the entire candle holder I wanted to highlight some of those beautiful carved details. So I'm now coming in with some of Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax in brown, and I'm really working it into all those details and then wiping back some of the excess with a microfiber cloth. You can see how it's really sitting into all of those carvings and the texture that was already on this beautiful piece. I think this is a really effective way to add some interest and highlight the beauty of this piece. I'm using a wax today to get the antiqued look, but remember you could always use a dark glaze for this step or perhaps a paint wash. And here's our finished candle holder. This was a quick and easy flip, but I think it was very effective. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. Our last project is this beautiful ornate clock. I put a little short up on my YouTube channel and you guys voted overwhelmingly that I should paint this. So I've already sprayed this with rust -Oleum's Clear Matte Sealer and now I'm coming in with Dixie Belle's Buttercream Chalk Mineral Paint. I'm going to paint the entire clock except the face to start off with. I really wasn't sure how far I wanted to go with this. I knew I needed to get rid of that orange, but I wasn't sure if I was going to keep the clock face as is or if I was going to change it. So I'm doing this in stages. I've started off by just painting the outside. You can see I'm being careful not to get paint on the face. I just wanted to see what it looked like with just the outside of it painted before I made any more decisions. 
Now, unfortunately, I was not able to take the hands of the clock off. I did try, but I felt like I was going to break it if I continued trying to remove them. So I decided that I would just work around them today. So if you're wondering why they're still on there, I just, I could not take them off without the risk of damaging them. Once my first coat was dry, I decided that I just did not love the gold that was on the numbers on the face of the clock. So I came in and applied a coat of paint. This time I'm just trying to see if I like it with the image still in the center. And this isn't a bad way to approach a project. You can just do it in stages to see what you like and what you don't like. And I sort of lived with it for a little while here. I'm actually sealing it because I have three coats of buttercream on this and I'm just sealing it in because I thought I was going to stop here. And I just sort of had to have a bit of a think about it. This one was a bit of a challenge in that I kind of wanted to keep the original artwork in the center, but I felt like it was still a bit too much. So I did come in and paint the face after all. Hopefully you guys aren't too upset with me. I honestly just felt like this was such a beautiful clock and that the center image sort of detracted from that. There's so many beautiful carvings and details and I thought it needed to be a little bit plainer in the center so that the rest of the clock could shine. After my paint had dried completely, I sealed the rest of the clock with Dixie Belle's Gloss Clear Coat. Now I'm going to grab one of my favorite products, Dixie Belle's Grunge Glaze, and I'm going to apply it to the entire clock. This is a very subtle way to antique a piece. It isn't a dark brown. It dries quite a light brown, and it definitely gives more of an authentically aged look. So I'm gonna work my way around the clock, and I'm going to add that glaze, and then I'm going to wipe it back in certain areas. This is going to highlight all of those beautiful carvings, all of those beautiful details that I'm trying to ensure are highlighted but at the same time it's not going to be overwhelming this is definitely a french country piece to me and french country to me is not super bright gold it's not lots of bright colors it's quite a subtle look as I was wiping back the glaze, I was trying to think about what my next steps could be. And I did think about possibly adding some stamps or some transfers to the clock face, but all the things that I tried just felt like it was a bit too much, a bit too overwhelming. And again, I want the carvings and the ornate details of this clock to be the focus. So in the end, I decided not to add a transfer. But let me know in the comments if maybe you would have done something different. Once my glaze is completely dry, I'm coming in with Dixie Belle's Gold Gilding Wax and again, I'm going to be using this very sparsely. I'm not going to be using much at all. I've just got a little bit on my finger and I'm just hitting some of the details. I want this to look like it's faded gilding, that it's just happened over time. And again, I didn't like the bright gold that was there before because it was too much. So I want to make sure that I don't go back to that. I've got to keep this really subtle. If you're doing a similar project to this, but you're not a fan of gold, you could always use a bronze wax or a silver or a copper. Dixie Belle has all of those colors and I'm sure there are a lot of other brands out there that carry some beautiful waxes that you could use instead. And here's our finished clock. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think that it already had so many beautiful details that it just really needed some paint and some antiquing and a little bit of gold to really highlight what was already beautiful there. Let me know in the comments though, would you have approached this differently? Would you have added transfers? Let me know what you think of this in the comments.
I really hope that you enjoyed today's video and that it's given you some inspiration on how maybe you can update some items in your homes with paint or maybe those beautiful rural scene stamps from IOD. Let me know in the comments, did you have a favorite project from today's video? If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, and share it out to a friend that you think might enjoy it. If you haven't already, I would love it if you could hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find the products used today on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.